Okay. Welcome back to the shop. So today's project probably warrants a little bit of backstory so you understand what I'm trying to build. This is a rocket engine. It's a solid fueled engine, probably equivalent to about a J to a K if you wanted to compare, but that's besides the point. Now this is a rocket body. Well, it's not really a rocket body, but it's just a cardboard tube that I'm using to illustrate my point. Because this is only an engine, obviously it needs a body to go in, but body and engine are usually different diameters, so we have to figure out a way to mount this inside of a body. The one that we're actually going to be using for this engine is about four inches in diameter. This is at its widest, including the screws, about three and a half. So we need to make some adapters. And that's where these parts come in. Basically what I'm going to be doing is making a clamp that can clamp around the engine so it'll have an ID of the engine body and it'll be big enough to where it fits snugly inside the tube and can be secured with a few screws. This is a little prototype I made just out of MDF. It's obviously broken and not functional, but it serves to illustrate the purpose. There'll be two halves and it'll, it'll clamp around the engine just like so and there will be screws to hold it in the body. It's a pretty simple part, but there's a couple unique manufacturing techniques that I'm gonna utilize, so I thought you'd, I'd take you along for the ride. I'm gonna be using... I'm gonna be using these uh, stainless steel threaded insert thingies that I got off of the master to have the screws go into along the outside. And that's just because this is gonna be something that's gonna see a lot of one, just force on the screws, and two, it's gonna be unscrewed and screwed in, probably a lot of times during its life. So I want the threads to be pretty robust. So stainless, obviously better than aluminum. I've never used these before, but we're just gonna try them out, see how they work. So before we get started, we're actually gonna to have to do a little bit of layout work. See, I have a bit of a problem, and that is these four inch aluminum rounds don't actually fit in my lathe chuck. And that kind of complicates things because I can't just grab onto the OD and bore it out like I would like. So what I've thought of as a, I guess, a solution is I'm gonna drill the center out by hand, or not by hand, on the drill press, or maybe on the lathe or something, and we'll have a hole, I think around three quarters of an inch, and that should make a big enough hole where we can grip it with the inside of the jaws. That'll allow us to clean up the OD just nicely. And then I'm gonna cut a basically a little lip right in here that is small enough for the chuck to grab onto so you can hold it while doing the rest of the boring and whatever other outside profiling we need to do. So I don't have one of those center finder thingies, the circle center finder thingies. I know I should have one, but I think I found a, I guess a temporary solution. So what I'm gonna do is just measure the diameter of this aluminum, which is, I'm gonna call that 4255. That's about the average. Now, obviously, I said four inch, but I got four and a quarter inch, which leaves me plenty of room to clean up any potential mistakes I may have made. But yeah, four, two, five, five. So I'll take that number, four, two, five, five, divide it by two, and that obviously gives us the radius. Now, if we have the radius on the calipers, then that will allow us to find the fabled center point. So what I'm gonna do is just make a series of arcs, because we don't know where the center is by one, if I describe one radius. But I'm gonna describe a series of arcs, which it's looking like you can't see at all in the camera. Oops, sorry about that. And I'll do a few of those, basically find the intersection, and that should be our center. I'll then punch and drill that as accurately as I can, and we'll see how 
close we end up, but yeah, that should be about good. Let's go ahead and try and drill this. So I've just got it punched and center drilled here. I'm pretty sure that's about as centered as I'm going to get it. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do is, as far as drill sizes go, I'm going to start with a 5 16 and then move up to a half and then three quarters. And this should be enough for the lathe to grab onto it. I might have to go up to an inch, which I have. But if I do have to use an inch, I'm probably going to have to drill it on the lathe because the mill can't actually reach a low enough speed to run that drill because it, it, it'll just chatter like crazy, I have a feeling. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and work my way up and we'll see if it, uh, see if it works. Well, we've uh, hit our first roadblock here. Uh, you just saw me drill all the holes up to three quarter inch. This part is still smoking hot from it because I think the three quarter inch bit's a bit dull. But anyways, it turns out that at the smallest, my lathe chuck can grab ODs that are just larger than one inch because I'm pretty sure this, this pipe is has a one inch bore and it just, it just doesn't want to fit. It's almost there though. And the only drill bit I have that's bigger than one inch is this monstrosity, which is one and five sixteenths. So this is kind of the only option I have left because I still have no way I can hold this. I don't have a face plate. I don't have like a big four jaw or anything. So we're gonna have to find a way to make this work. So. What I'm going to do, and this is again a solution to another problem, is my mill actually doesn't have the horsepower to run this bit. It's just, I mean when it comes down to it, it used to be a drill press. It does, it's, has a very undersized motor and it can't run this bit. I mean I had a hard time with the um, three quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is we're going to drill it in the lathe. And this is not the kind of operation I was hoping we'd have to do but frankly, I'm out of other ideas. So the bit is gonna be held in the chuck and I'm gonna take the tool post here. This will be our reference surface. I'll square it up against the chuck and we'll just, we're just gonna drill it like this. Now, obviously this is not at all an accurate operation and this is not the way I wanted to be doing this. So I'm gonna try and not go all the way through with this bit I'm just gonna drill enough where I can barely fit these, fit the jaws in there. And that'll be hopefully be enough just to machine a, a little step to where I can grab onto the OD. Cause that's all I need. Once I have the step, we're fine. I can bore it out on the lay that we won't have a problem. But this is gonna be the, I think the only solution as for right now. So let's try it. Okay, so I've just put the lathe into back gear, got it at a super low RPM. Hopefully it'll run that. Don't wear gloves. I'm just doing this because the part is so hot, I can't really hold on to it. And the lathe is at a slow enough speed where I'll have enough time to react if anything gets caught. But yeah, don't do this. I guess nothing left to do but to uh, Try it out. Upon closer inspection, it appears that this drill bit was sharpened by a monkey. There is absolutely zero clearance behind the cutting edges. I don't know if you can see that. That is why you don't buy second hand. Well, nothing to do now but resharpen it. All right, I've gotten the drill bit sharpened to where it cuts at least a little bit. It still has a lot of ways to go, but it's good enough for now. I have I've turned the speed up on the lathe because 
it was just going too slow. And honestly, because this isn't the sharpest drill bit in the world, it would be, it's a little bit easier to go faster. So it removes a bit more material, but that led to me not being comfortable wearing gloves. So this is the new work holding strategy. So we're just gonna go with this, I guess. That was a pain. I've got it drilled, oh, probably half inch deep, or like at least the flat parts, a half inch. So that's enough to bear on. And that should fit on there just fine, which means we can finally start cleaning up. Or I might actually save the OD for after I get the bore done. Anyways, I'm gonna make a step on the front, first and foremost. So we can just grab on the OD and then bore it out because that was horrible to drill. All right, I've just got the aluminum mounted in the chuck. The, uh, here, let me show you. The run out was actually a lot better than I was expecting because after that drilling operation, I thought it was gonna be terrible, but not too bad. I'm going to actually use, I haven't shown this yet, but recently in an eBay auction, I got this sweet, big old DNMG tool holder that is almost the size of one of my regular tool holders. As you can see, it dwarfs it. In fact, it's so big, I don't have a way to hold it in my quick change, so I've made a T-nut so it can just fit right where the quick change usually goes. So more rigidity, more better. I just drilled a hole straight through it. That maybe, I don't know, it's not worth as much anymore, but yeah, it works. So anyway, let's cut a step at long last. Decided I'm just gonna clean the OD up a little bit, just real quick. Getting a, these weird band patterns in the uh, OD. I don't know if, well, you can see it a little bit, I think, but I, I can feel it too. They're like little dips. I think it has something to do with the power feed. Something must be like binding in a gearbox or something, slowing it down. Kind of sucks. All right, anyways, on to the front face. Well, today's tomorrow and here's where we're at. Just got the lip cut. Now there's nothing left to do but bore and finish the OD. Let's do it. Alrighty, just finished up the bore. It's Couple thou oversized, but that's all right because obviously it's going to be split and it'll clamp down anyways. Surface finish is all right. Uh, there's a, that same banding problem because I was using the power feed. Really got to look into that. But besides that, it's nice and smooth. Seems to fit all right. But before I take it off of the chuck, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to clean up the surface and then take the OD to final size just to keep everything as concentric with the bore as possible. Alright, here's where we're at right now. We've got bore, OD, and front face all finished. So these the two critical dimensions are to size, so we don't have to worry about that. Only thing left to do is just get rid of this lip and take it to final width. Because this was 
remember it was only just to hold on to it it's not an actual feature that we need so I'm gonna face that off and take this down to I think the dimension was 0.75 is what I want so I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch right now we're at 0.844 so a little ways to go but I'll do that and then drill the outside holes the screws drill the screw hole for the clamp and then last but not least slit it I'm gonna do it for this video so we've got it essentially done the only thing I haven't done is put in the threaded inserts and that's just because I don't have the body tube that I'm gonna be using for the rocket yet. So I don't really know the final dimension that this needs to be. So I'm gonna keep it oversized for now. Once I get the tube, I'll be able to measure it, take it down to the right uh, diameter, and then put these in. But that's the only holdup so far. Besides that, it's all done, it's all working. As you can see, I've drilled and tapped a hole here, split it just with a hacksaw, nothing fancy, and well, the screws are kind of in the way right now, but as you can see it fits on there pretty, pretty snugly, and then I don't have the Allen wrench on me right now, but it tightens down and locks, locks on really nicely, so that's good, but uh, yeah, that's... That's where we're at. I'll definitely do an update once we get some more parts in, but uh, for now, hope you enjoyed and uh, thanks for watching.